Welcome everyone to another Improve in Lunch and Learn event. We will give everyone another minute to get logged in and then we will be starting our event shortly. Welcome everyone to our Collaborating with Teams Remotely Lunch and Learn event. My name is Christopher Lee, and I will be one of the moderators for today's session. During the presentation, please use the Q&A panel on the side of your screen to ask any questions you may have. We will try to answer as many as possible. This presentation is intended to be a 200 level discussion around Microsoft Teams. As such, we won't be covering the basics as an introduction to Teams, but we will be diving a little deeper into how to use Teams and hopefully provide some tips and tricks to help you be more effective in Teams. I have the pleasure of introducing Bill Curry and Keith Egner, our presenters for today. Bill is our Vice President of Consulting here in Cle the Cleveland office. And Keith is a Technical Director for our Enterprise Business Solutions team. With that, I will go ahead and turn it over to Bill. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, high level here on our ag agenda. Um, things that we intend to cover in this uh, 45 minutes with you today. Uh, we're gonna talk about Teams, what it is, um, high level, uh, 10,000 foot level, but we wanna use that conversation to get some of the concepts down. So we could talk about teams and channels as well. So we'll, we'll do a good descript description and um, explanation around when to use a team, when to use a channel. Um, we're gonna talk about how you communicate with your team members and the effective ways to communicate with your team members inside of teams. Uh, we'll take a minute to talk about how you can make your channels more effective for your team. Um, we'll do web conferencing, which a lot of people are familiar with, but we'll show some of the gotchas in web conferencing and things that you can do to make it more effective. And then we'll show the, one of the key pieces of Teams, how you collaborate on content with your teams at the same time. Um, and finally, we'll do a wrap up questions and answers. As Chris mentioned, we will be doing questions and answers after each section. So if you do have questions on that section, go ahead and put your, your question in the Q&A panel and we'll take a moment to answer them in between each section. All right, let's take a second and talk about Teams. Uh, so Teams is Microsoft um, answer on how to bring your team together to help them collaborate. The intent here is let's have a way to let you communicate whatever is most appropriate for your team to communicate. That may be a chat, uh, that may be a, a web conference, that may be email. Um, that the intent here is let the people work, um, your team members work in the way that's most effective for them. Um, but give them this hub where they can com quickly come together, uh, collaborate, and also get access to the, the information, the tools, um, and the, the sites even that they need to have to get their job done. 
Uh, so each team can be customized. Um, the, that is the intent, is that the team is customized through channels um, and through tabs inside of the teams to let you get the most power for that team. Um, and then last is making sure you have the security so that any information that you're sharing in your team is secure, um, even within your enterprise as well as outside of your enterprise. So this is a quick view of Teams. We're going to spend a lot of time today um, actually looking at Teams and, and navigating in Teams. The good news is we only have a few slides here and then we're actually going to get into live presentations. So the idea though here is in, when I go into Teams, I've got my hub for teamwork. I can chat, I can get access to my content, I can easily contact the people that are in my team or in my organization in a workspace. Um, I can do voice, I can do video inside of the application. Um, Teams actually brings together a lot of pieces of Office 365. Uh, it brings in SharePoint, it brings in OneNote, uh, it brings in Planner, it brings in your email, your calendar. Um, you're going to see distribution groups, um, so I can easily access everybody in my team through distribution groups using O365 groups. Um, and then I'll be able to work in my Office applications as well, uh, either inside of the app or launch them from the app and use them in the actual Office application itself natively. And finally, Teams does have mobile, web, and desktop clients across all the platforms uh, to make it effective no matter where you're at. Um, each of those are fairly equal. Um, the, the, the main differences on the different platforms um, are really the capabilities of the, the device. So obviously a mobile device, um, you're not going to be able to have the site same screen size as a desktop, so it's, it's presented differently. But you still have most of the features that you can do in the desktop client, such as desktop sharing. I can actually show my mobile device screen if I want to in the mobile app. So some power there. Let's take a second here and talk about teams and channels. We get a lot of questions about when do I use a team? When should I be using a channel um, and confusions about it? So we want to help clear that up here from the start. Um, the first thing is all of your teams are inside of your organization. They are in your Office 365 tenant. Um, and the intent is a team is any grouping of team members who are working together on a common goal. Um, so it's how do I bring the teams together, um, let them collaborate, that is the team level is what you're intended to do there. If I have different people um, that are working together, that's a team. Um, and then inside of a team, I have channels, which are really topics or subjects that the team may be covering. Um, different ways of grouping that, I can group that on, you know, if it's fun events, I can group it on different areas of my team, uh, subdivisions of my team. Um, so there, I could break it apart separately there uh, based on what is most effective for me to get my teams communicating. What you'll see in a lot of cases is the way Microsoft has intended teams to work, you're going to have a few teams that are longstanding, but where it's really powerful is the short-term teams. I've got a six-month project team that I'm going to stand up. I'm going to provide a team site for them. Six months later, they're done. The team site goes away, and that's okay. Um, so that, that is the intent. There's a lot of capabilities built in on the let me stand up a team and let me get rid of the team when it's no longer needed. So keep that in mind as you're building your teams. Let me stop here for a second. Uh, oh, actually one sample first, sorry. Um, let's talk for a second about a sample to kind of help people understand. Uh, so I, this is an example where I have a sales team. Um, so then inside of that sales team, I can actually have channels. I could have an annual sales channel, a meeting, uh, or actually the annual sales meeting channel, the quarterly business review channel, monthly sales, the pipeline review, the sales playbook, those are all channels that are topics that the salespeople may care about. Um, actually in those, I can also be doing um, tabs and connectors that could be added inside of those that are important. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that today as well, but I could add Power BI reporting in there. I could use Trello to do some management of activities. I could actually have CRM sitting in there. So there's several different things in that sales um, team that I could have. You can see some other teams here. I'll hop over to the right to product team. Um, an example here of channels that are there. Now I'm breaking that product team into the different groups inside of that product team. Strategy, marketing, sales, operations, insights, service and support. A different breaking than how we did sales, uh, the, the sales team, but it makes sense for this product team to have those channels. So let's stop for just a second and see if we had any questions on that. Chris, was there anything there that we had pop up as we were going through that? 
Uh, no questions came in yet, but I think there probably might be some as we continue through the presentation. Okay, perfect. We'll hop into the next piece here with uh, communicating with team members. Let me actually hop into the VM here and we'll actually start to show teams um, and walk through these pieces. Uh, let me get back to my view here. All right, so the first we want to cover, oops, I need to go back. Um, we're going to actually show first some, some rud rudimentary pieces. How do I create a team? How do I create a channel? I suspect that many people on the, this uh, Lunch and Learn already do know how to do that, but it'll give us a chance to talk about some of those concepts we talked about when we talked about a team and a channel. Um, so let's go here first, and I'm going to actually create a new team. So I'm clicking here at the bottom, and I'm going to actually create a team. And you're going to see I can build it from scratch, or I can actually use an existing Office 365 or an existing existing team. I'm actually going to build this one from scratch. First thing I have to decide now, other than if I'm building it from scratch, is what type of team am I actually creating? A private team, a public team, or an org-wide team? This is important. Um, Org-wide, anybody can join. Uh, they're actually automatically joined at, by having an organization-wide team. Everybody's in that's in my O365 tenant. Uh, public is anybody who's in my organization is allowed to join. Um, and then private is actually a private um, team that they don't see, they can't join unless they're invited. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and do a public team. And we'll just use this one as, um, the development team for our Contoso company. And of course, I'll put in a nice description that actually has meaning for this manner that'll work. <laughs> so I've actually created the team now. And now it's going right to the point of let me add some members. So we're gonna add Keith, who is on this call. And we'll be talking with you here in just a little bit. Um, and we'll add Chris Lee, who is our moderator on this as well. So this is going to be our development team. So I now have a grouping of team members here that I can actually um, start to chat with inside of this development team. Um, I've already got a default channel. I automatically get a general channel, which all um, general topics go to, but I'm gonna go ahead and create another channel inside of, of this to help us um, further refine and in this case, we're going to do the, this is going to be the financial focus for the development team. Um, so this is a more sensitive area. So this is key financials for the product offering. And in this case, um, I'm going to make this private and say that only certain people can actually access this. So this is now a subset of the people in my team. If you remember, I had three people that we put into this team, Keith, Chris, and myself. Um, in this case, it's going to actually let me provide, okay, who can actually have access to this? So in this case, Keith is supposed to know the financials. So I'm going to add Keith to that. And now I actually have a private team that not everybody can see. Uh, Chris would not have access to this. He has access to the development team. He has access to the general channel, but only Keith and I have access to the financial channel. And so I can see it one here. I can actually see the lock, which lets me know it's private. Um, further, I can actually see up here in the right-hand corner of Teams that this is a channel um, and it's um, open to only the people who are at, in this channel that have access to this channel. Uh, if I click on the general, I can actually see this was a public. So anybody in my organization that has access would have access to anything that's actually posted in this channel. Um, if I'm actually curious about um, who is in a team, so we can go up here and we'll use the, the Mark 8 general team. Um, I'm, I'm, if I'm worried about posting sensitive data, I can actually click and actually manage the team and get a view of who the owners are. If I need to go talk to Megan to get somebody added to the group, um, or I can actually see everybody who's actually in the group and validate that this is the right group to be actually sending this information to. So that gives us how to get in. If I do decide I want to join a team, um, I can actually go down here and request to join. So if it's a public team or if it's an org team, I can I can put in a join request and go right in. If it's a private team, I can request to join that private team, but it has to be approved in order to see any of the content. Um, lastly, um, you'll see that Teams does do some management for us of hiding channels. 
Um, it will also hide teams when you get too many of them. Uh, so the the channels that we have here, if that they've actually been hidden, I can actually click and decide that, you know what, I really want to see the, the go to market plan. So it's now visible. It'll stay visible after um, a few weeks of not using that. It'll actually teams will do its intelligence and say you're really not using. Let's let's hide it. Same thing with a, um, a team in general. I can actually hide a team if I really wanted to and say let me go ahead and uh, hide right there at the top. Sorry. <laughs> All right, we're at another spot there. That really shows you how to create a team, join a team. Hopefully that helps everybody understand a little bit more about the um, the capabilities of channels versus teams. We'll take a, st a stop here and actually let Chris um, go through our Q&A and see if we have any Q&As that are out there. Yeah, we actually had a question come in um, that asks, suppose you want to create a group where you can communicate with a vendor group. Can you do that? So yes, you. You can. Um, Keith, did you want to address that? Yeah. Uh, so Teams does allow the ability to have what we call guest accounts. And guests can participate in the chats, uh, collaborate on documents within the team. Uh, there are some tenant level configurations, though, that may limit uh, what teams can have external guests or not. And when Bill was adding members uh, to a team, you would just add in their email address um, that they are, are from, whether it's uh, a vendor or a supplier or so forth. And then they, depending on the settings of your tenant, um, can be, you know, get a, a request to join that team and accept that. And then they are now a member of that team. Uh, so yes, uh, teams can be used both internally and with external partners. All right, Chris, do we have any other questions in the queue? That's it for right now. All right. All right, now that we've got a team and we're in the team, we're actually going to talk about how do we start communicating. We're going to start simple with some chat pieces. So as I'm in a team, I can actually uh, send a message uh, to the entire team. I, you'll see there is a post. Um, that's here, so I can actually see any message that I type here. Um, we'll go to everybody on the team, so that's going to go to anybody who is in this team. They have that. Um, there is the ability to say, what do I want to get notifications on? If you notice as notifications are popping in here in teams on the right hand side, there's a little banner that pops up. Um, I can actually say if I want to get notifications from this channel so I can set my channel notifications. And this will let me know, um, do I want to know every single time somebody put a post um, in this channel? If it's a critical channel, you may want to have that. Um, if somebody mentions the channel, what do I do in that case? So this is, if somebody actually says, hey, you really should go check out the general channel, this would actually give me a, a notice that somebody mentioned the channel. Um, in this case, I'm not going to turn on notifications for the general channel, but if I really want to get a hold of Keith, I can actually reply to Keith, call out Keith, and say um, I type the at sign Keith and type Egner. You'll notice it changes to purple. It lets me pick him. Um, so I actually saw his name there. I could pick him. Um, and I have something I need him to do. And I'll put that into here. And so you'll see a couple things here. It just happened. Keith did it to me as well. So he notified me uh, by putting an at Bill Curry. Uh, I got the notification in the bottom. Uh, for a second there, you would have seen the one here. You actually see that I have one message sitting in development that's been tagged to me. So that's that's letting me know there's an action that I need to be aware of. Um, and that's what I just did with Keith by calling him out. I was able to say, <laughs> go ahead and grab, um, be aware of this and it pops and it makes it aware so that he sees it. He doesn't have to go through all of the posts and actually look that I actually had a task assigned to him. This will take it straight to him when he actually clicks on it. Furthermore, I can actually go a step further and do entire team if I really wanted to. So if I wanted everybody on this Mark 8 project team um, to get notified, oh, this one, I picked a bad one. I'll show, I'll explain that in just a second. Let me go here to Contoso um, and I'll explain why I couldn't do what I wanted to do there. In this case, if I want to send it to all of Contoso, 
I can actually put a note here and say, you know, great quarter. And that is going to notify everybody who is in the Katoso team that they, they received something, uh, that I had posted something with their name on it. Um, back to why I couldn't do that on Mark 8. Um, if I go look at the channel settings here, or at the team settings, You actually see I've actually turned off the ability to do channel notifications on that channel. So there isn't actually the ability to do new posts on that. I can control that inside of my team as well. So individually I can control it or I can control it managing the team slash channel. I can set those settings as well. All right, let's go back to I do have a notification here that there's something needing my attention in the uh, general development. So I'll go to click down here and we'll actually see. I got a message from Keith thanking me for joining the team. If I wanted to, um, let me go ahead and do a separate chat here with Keith and, and try to go personal with him. So in this case, I'm cl I clicked the chat, um, create a new chat, and I can just type, type a name up here. In this case, I want to talk just to chat to Keith, and I could say, hey, got a question. And this is normal chat. Everybody has largely used that. A couple things I did want to show here as we're doing a chat, Teams has finally added the ability to pop this chat out. Um, so that's one of the problems that people have is, is when I have multiple chats going on, having to jump back and forth. Um, in this case, I can now pop it out, create it in a separate window, have this separate window that I can do things. So this is one of those examples of this change is rolling out across teams um, in the different tenants. It is in our demo tenant today. It may be in your tenant. It may not be in your tenant just yet. All right, um, let's go back, show a couple other things that we actually have some capabilities for. For those teams that actually have um, international flavor, um, I did want to call out the ability for teams to do translation. So in this case, Deborah has actually um, put it in a language that I am not capable of reading. Um, so I'm going to have teams go translate that for me. It's built right in, go ahead and translate it. Quick translation, it's translated to English looks good i understand it and i can reply to her and she can do the same thing so i can reply in english she's going to get it and be able to translate it if that's what she needs from a from a greek perspective um lastly let's go ahead um let me go back to keith's chat so in this case if i wanted to mark that keith said he could help and i want to make note of that i can actually save this message Nice little feature um, to be able to go back to the key messages that you had that you want to remember. Um, I've got it saved um, and I can actually go back um, and, and see those saved ones. Um, and Keith, I forget where I can go see those saved ones. It, it's uh, if you go to your top, uh, if you're logged in, yep, bring that down and then your saved items. There we go. Thank you. Yep. So these will have all my saved. So I can go back and remember what, if I had an action item, I can actually track it that way as well. Thanks, yeah, Keith. If you noticed uh, when you click on, if you have more than one save item, um, it's like a bookmark and it'll list them in like an index off to the left-hand side. And when you click on them, it'll actually go to that thread and highlight the, the portion that you saved. So it'll quickly go to it. So if you got a, a very long running thread and need to kind of like index or bookmark it, uh, to go back later on. That's what uh, the save functionality is, is really helpful with. All right. And then last, I do, I'll do. i show one of the things that, that's helpful. If I do have an ongoing chat, Keith and Chris and I talk regularly, um, and I want to be able to get back to this, you know, I could, I could actually make this the leadership chat, rename this chat. It'll actually show up now, hey, this is a leadership chat. And, and that way, if I'm trying to look for this in the future, it may be a little quicker for me when I do my search. I can actually search for that leadership chat. I'm trying to get this out of the way. Go away. All right, so I'm going to go away. There we go. <laughs> but I can actually come up here and look for it, and it will actually help me find it. So I can quickly find, by naming my chats, I can actually find that chat and get back to it pretty quickly. Um, let's go to meetings real quick. So let's say that I do decide that it's time to have a meeting. Um, one of the things I did want to show here is um, because the teams that are existing actually are an O365 group, they have a distribution list, they have a calendar for them as well. 
So if I actually take a look at, I believe it's underneath the Mark 8 project team. No, I'm probably in the wrong one. So we're having a script would actually help. Ah. Here we go. So I can actually see Nestor Wilkie actually created this weekly call. I'm a new member to this team. Um, if in the normal world, what would end up happening is somebody would have to go forward me that meeting invite and make sure I had that meeting invite on my calendar. Um, in this case, I can actually see that this this team has a regular meeting. I can add it, automatically add it to my calendar so that now it shows up on my calendar as well and it will get me in there as the accepted um, on it as well so that Nestor knows I'm going to be attending that. Um, but if I want to create one of these meetings, I have a couple of different ways I can do this. Um, so if I want to have a meeting with the, the development team, for example, um, one thing I can do is right here inside of Teams, I can go ahead and say, let's have a, a meeting here on Thursdays. I'm going to mess up the... And I can actually put it in the channel to go to the development in general and that way everybody who's in that team will get this meeting invite um so i can in this case i can make it a teams meeting um and and ha actually get everybody get that so i'll just go ahead and start this and it'll show up now on the it'll get sent to that channel and to that um, everybody on that channel so they actually have that that now if anybody joins the team, they're gonna see this is our regular meeting. I should have made it a recurrence, uh, but you can actually see it's in the post and it's there for people to see. If I actually hop over to my Outlook, the synchronization is actually there and I actually see it's popped onto my, out, my Outlook as well. Um, I could, if I wanted to, if I prefer actually doing things over here, um, I can invite an entire team or I can invite a channel so I can, from here, if I decide to do a, a recurring meeting, I can actually do a new Teams meeting here. And I can actually send it to Contoso. Oh, I did not look up. These are the demo gods. Uh, on the bad side. Um, <laughs> so we'll do it to a channel. I'll show everybody here how to do it to a channel. If I want to do the de de development general, I can actually grab the email address for this channel. It'll let me copy this. Unfortunately, I, there's not an easier way to do this today, but I can actually get the email address. Ah, did not copy it. And I can use that on this meeting invite. So that's going to send this to this channel. So I can do it from Outlook easily, or I can do it from inside of Teams. So we'll actually see it'll pop up here in a minute that it is actually here because I included it on this channel. There we go. Uh, likewise, I can send emails if I want, and I can send it to that channel, and it will show up in this IM. Uh, this this saved I am uh, the chat session that's going here so that I can have another way of sending information if I've got a, a detailed email that I did that I want to make sure shows up in the chat I can use the formatting and outlook um, and actually get a you know the editing and outlook put my formatted message and actually announce it here to the team by sending it to in the same manner all right let's see what else we did we did the channel notifications. Keith, did we do all the ones that we wanted to do? I believe so. Uh, the big thing there is I can get a general uh, post, which was just to me, uh, which we saw pop up in the chat. Um, I can also get it going to, um, I'm sorry, to a, a channel, which is a general post, or I can get a tag post where he tags it to me as well. Uh, in both cases, it'll show up here my activity. And when I get new messages, this will light up as well. Keith, we did send all the ones we wanted to send, correct? Yep. Yeah, I think we're good there. Okay. I'm going to stop there um, and see if we have any Q&A at that point. Chris, any new Q&A that we want to make sure we address? Yeah, we had a question come in 
regarding can you edit or delete messages after sending? And I was hoping you and Keith can maybe elaborate. I did respond in the Q&A, but maybe you can elaborate a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Let me go ahead and um, go to here and <clears throat> use this one as the example. So I, I actually can, if, if I've done a chat and I want to change my message because I misspelled something, you know, or I, I didn't use proper English, and I want to fix that. I can go ahead and edit my message and re resubmit it. Was that hitting the topic, Chris, that they were asking for? Um, maybe a little more in depth on um, my, my, me give you, since you're not looking at the uh, Q&A, yeah, let me give sorry. you what I responded back. Um, so the short answer is it does depend. So as you just demonstrated, you can delete or edit your message when it's part of a user or a group chat. But when you're in a meeting and you have meeting history, you might not be able to do so. And then there's a component for retention policy that might come into effect as well. So even if you could delete a message, it may still be discoverable from a compliance perspective. Yes. I didn't know if there was anything else you might want to show around that. Um, not that we really have compliance policy set up. <laughs> yeah, that's that's going to be, we don't have it set up to actually show that, but you're, it's a good point. The compliance policies do come into play um, as well as the meeting. And we're, we're going to actually hop into a meeting here in a second um, and actually show some of that so we can actually show sending messages in a meeting and what you can do there as well. OK, another question um, is for when using the email to a channel, is that something that is enabled by default or can you disable that? That is on by default. Um, so when, when a team is created, it creates that distribution list that the email is being used. Um, so by default, it'll be accessible as in uh, the global address list uh, for what that team email address is. Um, and then if you don't want to allow the notifications, that's where you would configure the settings at the notification at the team level. At the team or the channel level, correct? Yeah. Okay, and one final question. Um, do you have any information when Microsoft plans to allow the desktop app to allow multiple organizations to be logged in at once like they do with the mobile app? So currently you can switch um, the tenants. Uh, right now, the demo tenant we're in, those accounts aren't uh, registered with other, other tenants right now as guests. Um, but if, if we were in the top right next to your login, uh, you would have the current tenant that you're on and, and a drop down to switch between those other tenants. Uh, to see multiple tenants at once, um, we recommend that you can use the web app version and have multiple sessions of each tenant that you want to be in concurrently with. Um, but from the desktop app right now, you can switch the context, um, but not be live in them simultaneously. You'll, you can see the notifications if you have pending notifications between the tenants with that drop down though. There, I have not seen on the roadmap when Microsoft's going to address that. I know it is on the roadmap, but I haven't seen a plan of when that will get addressed. OK, any other questions, Chris? That's it for right now. All righty. So we're going to Keith, you're going to go ahead and start talking about um, the, the tabs and how to uh, making the channels more effective. So we're actually going to have you start a sharing session here in Teams. So we're actually going to show the, the receive, receiving side that will give us a chance to show how to um, be in a, a meeting live. So we'll do a, a live meeting here. Keith, do you want to go ahead and invite in the? Does there start doing a screen sharing? There we go. Yep. As you notice, I'll get. I have to accept it, and it will time out if I don't do it quick enough. So um, I'll go ahead and accept that. One thing I did want to call out here uh, by just doing that, we don't have audio. Um, we, we actually are muted. All we're doing is screen share, and what Keith disclosed on, <laughs> it, it, there is a window that pops up. 
that says, hey, do you want to do audio? Do you want to talk as well? Well, we're already talking. So to add audio right now would just give us feedback. So you don't want to hit the, the hang up because that'll stop your screen sharing. Likewise, you don't want to hit the um, yes, do it. So the easiest thing to do is hit the minimize uh, up in the top right corner of that window that pops up. So you can continue to sh screen share and not have audio going if you don't need to have audio going. Yep. All right, go ahead, Keith. All right, thanks, Bill. Uh, so Bill covered a lot of, uh, I would say, the, the standard day-to-day -day, uh, usage of Teams. Uh, there's the what I call the superpowers of Teams, and really getting Teams to collaborate is by leveraging uh, the tabs on a team. So the tabs are in the top section of each channel, and each channel can have different tabs. The tabs allow you to add in a whole slew of third-party applications, integrations, other applications, um, real-time information, uh, and, th and this uh, list grows uh, daily. I, I do want to note that uh, depending on your tenant uh, configuration, uh, they may be controlling or limiting what apps you can choose from, um, but that's uh, out of the box, you'll see there's 530 plus uh, apps that you can extend uh, your team uh, with. And some uh, really good examples of those are your, your standard uh, OneNote uh, is a great example. So if we wanted to add in a, uh, a nice uh, documentation capability to this channel, we can add in and create a new, new notebook and this allows uh, a direct pin to that notebook for that team to work with and keep notes. And this is uh, one note on the web, so you get uh, uh, multi-author capabilities, um, easy way to track and store um, like product documentation, uh, information around whatever that team is or activity is being done. So. Uh, you can have multiple uh, OneNotes, you can have multiple tabs. Uh, another great example is the planner uh, tab, and this really uh, allows teams to become more structured. And that's the Power BI one. Before I go into the planner one, <laughs> I'll skip over to the Power BI app. Uh, so here's a great example where instead of trying to create uh, monthly reports or documents or spreadsheets um, that are, are versioned and changed month to month, you can actually integrate Power BI as a tab and in, into a Power BI dashboard that gives you real-time information based off of where the data is being collected and gives everyone on the team the ability to have that centralized place to know where to go to get the information it gives them the same information for everyone to view, uh, so you're not emailing around uh, old versions or um, outdated information. So extending your channel with tabs and information is one of the key ingredients to, to really being effective. Uh, you can also have, uh, let's see here, Let's go to our research and design, research and development. Here's a, uh, a planner tab or a planner app. And uh, planner is another uh, directly integrated uh, solution from Microsoft with Teams that uh, when you create a plan, it's tied directly to the security of that team. So you can manage the users and, and activity um, based off the team for this uh, this app and, and planner is uh, kind of a lightweight uh, uh, organization for tasks and, and lightweight project management, but uh, it's directly embedded in with teams. Uh, you can have buckets of organized uh, activities for that team. Uh, you can easily create new buckets. Uh, we'll call this the, the demo bucket. And, and quickly and add tasks. Um, so uh, need a demo. I can uh, sign it to Bill. And I'm going to give him a due date of tomorrow. I can quickly start adding more tasks if I wanted to. 
So your team can uh, create transparency amongst everyone else uh, by you know, adding in their own tasks, updating their tasks of progress, and you can easily view um, some analytics around those tasks and activities. Uh, so when I click on the charts tab inside of the planner app, I can quickly see, you know, how many tasks are left, uh, you know, kind of outstanding uh, tasks by by different areas or buckets. Um, you can also add labels. Uh, you can filter uh, your view by any kind of uh, activity that you have. So if I wanted to view just the, the engineering bucket, the, the analytics dynamically change. And let's say, you know, I want to see what's due this week. And there's nothing due this week in engineering, so check on manufacturing. And I can add multiple buckets, and we have one task due this week that I just created. You can also kind of view, uh, you know, filtered status by user or team member. So Bill right now has got the only task that's due this week. So organization within a team is always key. Uh, communication is is a must have. And being uh, together as far as who's doing what and when and, and creating those committed actions with tasks is, is a great way to be organized. So if I went back to our buckets, I could remove my filters. And I mentioned uh, labels as well. You can create dynamic labels and tag uh, tasks that are related to things. Uh, but I can also view everything on a schedule basis. So knowing what to do and when it needs done, um, it, the, the planner tasks give you a, a direct access to, um, here's what we're scheduled to do this week. Um, I can then filter it to maybe just my tasks. Um, so Bill's the only one with the task, I can filter it by him. Um, but if there was multiple team members, uh, let's say your, your QA team uh, had several tasks and you want to see exactly what the schedule is for that, if you're making plans for future work, um, or if you're collaborating on like a, 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 our, our, uh, like a proposal response and you've got sales involved, you've got uh, tech leaders involved, um, you may have tasks to create estimations and you know, kind of backdating when that, that uh, RFPs uh, do, you can create those tasks and assign those out and the team can dynamically uh, update and communicate their progress uh, directly in Planner, which is inside that team. Um, you meant, uh, you saw before in the uh, mentions and calling out people in, in the uh, chat sessions, uh, you can reference tasks, uh, not directly, but you can say, hey, Bill, you know, I see you got a task due this week. Um, and then that helps raise awareness or, or reminders as well. So tabs are uh, extremely important. And, you know, we had we showed Planner, we showed uh, Power BI, uh, we showed uh, uh, OneNote, but you can also uh, directly link to like Excel files. And I want to say, well, there's a PowerPoint. Let's see if we got any Excel files in here. I can create a tab directly to an Excel document. So if this is like the utmost importance of uh, activity that the team is working on, uh, we can tab that uh, right in the team. And, uh, you know, let's say it's an R&D document, like a Word document. You know, everyone involved can be dynamically adding or co-collaborating directly on that document within that team. So tabs is uh, an important place uh, to organize and to highlight uh, information related to that team. And each channel can have different tabs within that team. Uh, so you can have multiple plans, you can have multiple documents, you can have multiple links. Uh, and, and you saw before the, the amount of apps that are available. Hey, uh, so you've got a question here. All right. So we've seen you can add in tabs for gallery items. Can you add a tab for a custom line of business application that you may have in-house? 
Uh, so you can add tabs to uh, power automate or um, solutions. So a canvas solution you can do. As far as a custom uh, in-house built application, uh, Teams does have uh, a, an SDK or software development kit to allow you to integrate with, and you can publish that app to your Azure environment on your tenant, and then that makes it available in this gallery. Um, so if it's uh, compliance um, and, and, and there's some some handlers to, to register it in with Teams and make it uh, uh, extensible uh, from Teams, you can then integrate it. Um, you can also directly link, let's say it's an ASP.NET web application. You can link directly to that web app uh, via a URL. Uh, so let's say you have you know, a timekeeping system. And in this, you know, every week someone's asking me, what, where's the URL and you know, whatnot? You can link directly to that web app. So there's there's a, a few different ways. If the solution's built on Office 365, um, there's most likely an app for it already. If it's custom built uh, using Power Automate, you can integrate that as a tab. And if it's a you know on-prem hosted web application, you can link directly to it as a website, or you can build your own uh, Teams apps that can be added in. Okay, thank you. We have. Uh, one other question here. When you add files, do they automatically get saved in SharePoint or how do you sync with SharePoint? That is a great question. So when a team is created, it does create a SharePoint site uh, automatically uh, when the team is provisioned. Uh, the files tab that you see in the team or the channel is a SharePoint library in the background. Uh, so you can open it up in SharePoint and review it. And in this case, let's see if we got any documents here. Uh, each channel, yeah, so each channel has its own uh, set of files. But if you open it up into uh, in SharePoint, you can actually, I don't know if it's going to make me log in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good old helpful hints. So each channel creates a folder inside of SharePoint. So if I go to the documents, you'll see that there's a folder for each channel related to this team. And that's because uh, each channel can have its unique permissions. So I may have access to general, but not the, the NC460 sales. And if I didn't have access, it won't be visible inside of SharePoint. Yeah, actually on private, key part is on private channels. It's actually not even stored in this SharePoint location. It's a separate SharePoint location to ensure that there's no problems with security of, of the, that, those files. Yeah. So if I, if I understood the question correctly, you know, um, are the files stored in SharePoint? Yes, and they're separated by each channel. All right, excellent. Thank you. All right. All right. Let me go ahead and hop out of our screen sharing. Uh, so we were showing a little bit there of the, the screen sharing. I can chat, obviously, when we're doing this as well with Keith. Uh, so in here, you can see I could chat. This is, can I edit? Actually, I can edit this one too. So even these messages that I can edit in the meeting that we're having, the informal meeting that we're having right now. So we can go in and edit those to the earlier question. Uh, but I do have chat here so we could be chatting while we're talking. We're actually using our voice. You could imagine this also being a voice call that we're using here as well. So I think that helps a little bit on the um, a little bit of the capabilities on the web conferencing. I am going to show the opposite side of this since Keith had shared before. I do want to show a couple of the, the pieces. Um, one, the, one thing that did pop up, if you noticed, uh, you price all my notifications as T Keith assigned me tasks. I got a notification. Uh, Planner actually chatted with me and said, by the way, you got a task to do. I also got an email, so <laughs> those I can turn off, uh, but I did get three reminders and as well as Keith sending me a reminder a couple days before. Um, <laughs> but if I want to do a, a meeting with somebody, um, and I'm going to go the opposite way. Keith, we didn't talk about this, so I'm going to prepare you for it. I'm going to go ahead and do the opposite way with Keith and actually 
share with him so we can kind of show some of the options that are here because there are some questions on the options. So I'm going to do the screen share um, is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do the I could do a meet now. I could do an audio call um, here just by clicking the audio call with Keith. I can also do the audio call with an entire team. Uh, so if I actually come down. If I did this right, the financial team. Uh, let's see now. I'll do it. I'll do it from the chat window for now. So I can do the, the call. Um, I'm going to do the, the screen sharing. One of the things that when you do a screen sharing in a meeting, I did want to call out. Um, there are three different groupings of that screen sharing in a meeting. And you know what, Keith, I'm going to do a meet now with us if we we're going to try this live and without planning. So uh, let's just see what happens here with this. I'll do it to the team. Hopefully we don't get any audio problems. Um, the good thing here is that I want to show is this sharing. Um, a lot of people get confused on what is actually showing here at the bottom. Um, so I did want to call this out. What you have on the left hand side is any desktops that you have. So this would they're stacked. So you have to scroll. Um, I can scroll down and see each of my screens to an earlier question that was uh, posted in the window. Can you share du dual screens today? You can't. It's one that you can pick from a screen. Um, I can also pick a window for any app that I currently have running. Uh, so that's helpful um, as well. If I only want to show the app that, that, that I want to have the person see and not my entire desktop. And then if I have PowerPoint presentations, I can actually pick the PowerPoint presentation and share it as well. So I know a lot of people um, get a little confused with this grouping. Think of these as vertical columns of desktop windows and PowerPoints. And then I can do some other features over here to the right. But that'll help you um, as you're as you're deciding what should I share. Remember, if I do a desktop, I am sharing everything that's on my desktop. If I do a window, I'm only sharing that application. If I actually have something that goes on top of that window um, in my own machine, it'll black out that portion. You won't be able to see what's underneath of it. So if notifications are popping up, people will see a little black square on your window because they you have you have something in front of it. Um, OK, I think we're good there. Um, one other thing that I will share here, um, we're getting close on time, so I'm trying to be conscious of the time. So you do have the ability now in Teams, they haven't opened it up to make it easy for people to, to find, but you do have the ability to set your backgrounds, um, very similar to what I'm doing here in this Teams Live event. I have a virtual background behind me of our improving logo. Um, in Teams, I can actually set that. Um, and I'll show you where to do that. That's actually in File Explorer. Uh, so if I actually go to, I'm going to copy and paste this. I will take a second to give everybody time to see it. Oops. So what I want to do is actually, I'm going to take this file and, and put it in App Data, Microsoft Teams, Backgrounds, Uploads. If I do that, I should have done this the other way. I need two windows. <laughs> Let me get two windows open. Okay. Uh, I haven't seen that before where I actually have to create the folder. Uh, I have a feeling this is not going to work. Um, it's probably because you're it's inside your VM. Uh, yeah, so I'm worried about it being in the VM. Anyway, that's if I drop that fold, if I drop that file into that folder, uh, it will show up when I actually do my meeting. I can actually change my background and say this should be my virtual background. So for those wanting to do that, that'll get you there. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that. Um, last thing, when you're in a web conference, you can actually do a recording. Um, so the difference with this recording, uh, all I needed to do was click the recording when we, when Keith or I were in that meeting. Um, it's actually handled by Microsoft Stream, so that is handled in the cloud. 
Uh, it's not being done on either one of our machines, so it's not taking extra resources. Um, and it's not needing my audio mic working on my side or or my sound to be working right. Um, it's going to happen up in the cloud. It's capturing everything and recording it. And when the meeting ends, I actually get a notification in my channel that I have a stream recording that's now available. So that's that's helpful um, to remember everything that happened on the meeting to go ahead and take advantage of that. I'm going to go ahead and stop on that real quick and go to Chris and see if we had any questions on web conferencing. Uh, we did have a question that came up in regards to uh, specific features available via Teams that's unique to Teams while doing voice calling. And I know we're on kind of a time crunch here, but is there anything that you can add real quick to that? Can you explain a little bit more the question? Oops. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't really follow the follow the question. Yeah, so, the, so the question was, can you talk about some of the unique features of Teams during video calls? So, um, I'm not sure if there's anything unique that you're aware of that's different from other providers that might be a little bit outside the scope of um, uh, this discussion. I, I think I, I. So one of those is, you know, you can have your your backgrounds. Uh, Teams also uses uh, Microsoft's AI to blend in. So if you, when we showed Bill earlier, he had the uh, improving logo behind him. Um, so, you know, the the AI is actually filtering that uh, with him. Uh, the other thing is uh, sound based and knowing who's talking. So if you're in a meeting with, you know, 20 people. Uh, who's ever you know talking at that point? It'll try and highlight them. Uh, so if you had you know ten video sharings going on, it'll switch between those. Uh, so some some of those I would consider part of the the audio uh, video calling capabilities. And actually, there was I do see that other question that's here, Chris, which is the um, if you want to stream video, there's always a challenge with how do I get my system audio to go through. Um, Teams now has added that, so when you're actually doing your audio and on a call, you can actually click and say include my system audio um, to get that that YouTube audio going out to the the people in the meeting. Um, so that that is now possible um, to do now. So I, it's, a, it's a button in the thing. We can't really show it here, but there's a button when you're doing your your call that you can say include system audio. Yep. Okay. I did want to show a few other quick highlights, uh, tips and tricks. Um, so a lot of people don't take advantage of the top um, bar is the, the commands uh, that you can put into Teams. And uh, some, some quick ones is like uh, the activity. If you're working with somebody and uh, you forgot where they put it, you know, let's say you, you belong to multiple teams, um, but you remember that that specific individual had a question. Uh, you can quickly do the activity command and put in a user and it'll show you kind of all their posts and recent activities and, and you can quickly get to it. Oh, there, there's the question and it'll take you to that that specific team, that channel and that thread um, of their activity. Another one is the org uh, command. Uh, this is beneficial in very large organizations. Uh, if you've got to figure out you know, whose boss uh, someone is, uh, you can do the slash org and put in that person and see where they're at and look up that their boss. And so I need to do a you know maybe a performance review or or a discussion with Miriam here. I can call her and chat with her or uh, do do those directly from within Teams. Uh, there was the one question around files and SharePoint. Uh, I do want to point out that since they are, are the files are stored in SharePoint. Uh, there's a ton of capabilities uh, when when working with files and organizing files inside of Share inside of Teams using SharePoint. Uh, one of those is by changing your view. Uh, there's some built-in views here. One of the, the popular ones is a tiles view, and when you're using that view, that enables you to pin things um, right at the top. So if I highlight a, a document, I can pin it, and you can have multiple pin documents. Um, great, I got multiple selected. Let's say pin this one. So therefore, you know, whenever somebody comes into that uh, that view, you can see those pin documents quickly and easily. Um, maybe it's the the most relative version or document uh, related to that. Uh, 
Uh, but you can also modify these views. You can add in some additional metadata, filter them, and, and organize your content within that team in, in the files. So I know we're at time, so I will I will show it up. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Keith. So we will wrap here. We'll stay on the, the call for a little bit just in case people have some other questions, but I just want to highlight again what we covered. Uh, we did cover this. This is what Teams is, uh, what it's capable of doing and what its intent is how you should set up teams and channels, how you communicate with your team members inside of teams, and how you make those channels effective. Take advantage of the applications, take advantage of the tabs to make the, the channel more effective for your team. A little bit on web conferencing. We didn't get as deep into collaborating on content as we'd like to, um, but we hit on a couple things of how you can structure files and, and, and use some of the pieces and capabilities inside of teams. So with that, we will go to any other questions and answers or questions that anybody has. We'll take a minute to answer. If there are no questions, we'll thank everybody for your attendance today. Please give us feedback and um, take a look at the improving schedule for future Lunch and Learns. This is a, something we were doing on Wednesdays and Fridays and would love to have people attend those Lunch and Learns as appropriate. All right, thank Chris. you very much, Keith and Bill. Um, great presentation at the Present, we don't have any uh, additional questions in the Q&A, um, but we can stay on here for a few more minutes in case anybody does want to post anything. But uh, at this time, I think uh, we're, we're pretty much wrapped up. So I did, again, to reiterate what Bill had said, appreciate everyone's time to, to jump in and attend this presentation. Hope you guys, everyone found value and uh, learned something new about using Teams. All right, I haven't seen any other new questions come in, so we'll go ahead and end the event. Um, but should you have any questions, uh, as Bill mentioned, you know, visit the uh, Improvement website. And uh, if there's anything that you uh, um, have a question still on, don't hesitate to reach out to the Improvement team. Thank you very much.